In this video, I'll be going over the stop sign detection algorithm that I wrote for my self-driving car using the Raspberry Pi 4. And I'll begin by first showing the code. Okay, so here's the code for stopping the car at a stop sign by first recognizing the stop sign and then reacting to it accordingly. So I begin, again, this is in the Python language and the libraries I'm importing are the PyCamera.Array library, the PyCamera library, the GPIO pin library for the Raspberry Pi, um, the Time library, and again the OpenCV for the Computer Vision library. For, initial, for initialization, I save the camera as a camera object for the Pi camera, setting the resolution for each of the frames that I'll be saving throughout this video to 640 by 480 with a frame rate of 20 frames per second. And then for capturing the video, I'm doing that in, a, in an array with a camera object and again the size is 640 by 480. And then I do a sleep for a tenth of a second so that this can all load properly. And then I use something called a cascade classifier. It's in the OpenCV library, the computer vision library. What it does is you can import a .xml file, which basically an XML file is just a file that contains the inscription behind tons of different images that are taken for a certain object. It's used in machine learning, and in this case, I found online just a stop sign XML file. You can go online, and there's many of them for free at different GitHubs. Um, but I found a stop sign.xml file that just has tons of different images um, saved in this .xml file and then I just downloaded that and put that on my desktop so that I can now use this OpenCV library a cask sorry, OpenCV function called the Cascade Classifier where I import that whole .xml file that contains tons of different images of sizes, rotations, and a lot of different variations of the stop sign to make it a robust machine learning algorithm and then I save all of that as something that I just a variable I called stop sign cascade now for the car itself for actually driving it these are just me initializing the pins of where I plugged in the various pins into my Raspberry Pi I'm using Raspberry Pi 4 model B in this video and then I set up the pins as a .bcm setup mode making all of them as outputs so that the, because the Raspberry Pi is outputting for the motors to turn and for the servo to steer as well as initializing both these pins as low, the IN1 and IN2. Basically the IN1, IN2 as well as the ENA are different ports on the on the motor where the motor is attached to, the H bridge and basically the IN1 and IN2 control the direction. So when they're both low, it's completely off. If one is high, it'll go forward. And then if you flip it opposite, if the other one's low and the second one's high, then it'll go backwards. Um, then I just initialize the PWM for both the servo and the motor. Starting the servo at 13, I found that PWM to be, um, for, or that duty cycle to make it so it's pointing, the wheels are pointing forward based on my setup and the starting of the motors is 25. So just starting a PWM but it's not strong enough to actually drive the car. And then I begin with um, with recording the video now where I'm capturing it and while it's capturing it captures it inside a variable frame. I begin driving the car forward at a 70 duty cycle so 70 percent full power with it going forward, which requires me to put IN1 to high and IN2 to low, makes it the car go forward. And this is just the same duty cycle, so a 13 duty cycle, which will keep the servo so the wheels are facing straight. Then that frame.array I save as the image, so that's the current image that the camera just captured. I convert that to a gray image. Now that it's in a gray image, I can use the stop sign cascade um, the stop, stop sign cascade object inside the object it contains a function called detect multi scale and in that function I just pass in the gray image as well as 
a aspect ratio, the 1.1, and a thickness of 5. Um, and then from that, basically this function will find all of the stop signs using this stop sign cascade that we built up earlier. So it's basically a machine learning model and it finds all the, all the stop signs within that current frame. And then it returns the found stop signs and the length of that found stop signs, I just print out to the terminal so I can find out how many signs it's finding at every single frame. And then if the length of the found stop signs variable right there is greater than zero, meaning that we've actually found a stop sign in the image, then we're gonna enter this if statement and then inside a for loop for each of the found stop signs we're going to have an x y width and height so the x y is the bottom corner of the stop sign that it found and then the width and height are the top corners or, or the width and the height of the sign that it found basically this is just this is a lot of extra stuff that i just did visually in the process of building this algorithm so that I can draw a rectangle. That's what this is, it draws a rectangle with a mix of red and green colors and zero blue with a thickness of two around the stop sign based on the size of the point that it found the stop sign at and the width and height so I can draw that rectangle around the stop sign and then I just save that as an image. And then as well after that for loop, so it's doing that for each stop sign that it found, then I say if the sign width. So in here I save the width and the height of the stop sign as sign width and sign height. And then I say if the sign width is greater than 65 or the sign height is greater than 65, which is essentially meaning our rectangle that we drew around our stop sign, if that's greater than 65 pixels, then I just call these, which is me just preparing for the future. Um, to turn on brake lights, decrease motor speed, stop car, that's all printed out to the terminal. And then I set IN1 and IN2 to low, which will stop the car. And then I wait for a second and then I break this overall, if you look up here, this overall for loop is what I break. And then I just do all the cleanup. And then if it weren't to find any stop signs, I just go on raw capture truncate. So I just clear the stream. And then I find out if the key letter Q is pressed, then that will also break this video. So as if the code actually doesn't work or not, then that's a, that's a possible way to stop it as well. And that's how it just keeps looping through until it finds a stop sign and it'll stop. Now, going back to here, the reason why I chose 65 pixels, that's arbi like, it's arbitrary depending on what the system is. So I chose 65 pixels because initially the stop sign, initially when it finds a stop sign, it sees a stop sign, but it's still far away from the stop sign. But I want to get right up to the stop sign before the car stops. So basically when the stop sign is far away, that rectangle that is drawn around the stop sign is small. So the pixels width and height are smaller. And then as the car gets closer and finds the same stop sign, that rectangle drawn around the stop sign will get bigger because the stop sign is getting bigger with respect to the frame size. And that those variables I played around with till I found that those are the best ones to get the car to stop close to the stop sign. Shown here is the output to the terminal. And as you can see, it initially found that stop sign, but as I explained in the code, the width and height are only 31 and 31, so the stop sign is far away. As it continues to drive, it initially doesn't find the stop sign again, but then it finds a stop sign um, for every frame after that. And as it's getting closer to the stop sign, you'll see the width and the height of those frames of that stop sign that it found is getting bigger and bigger until it reaches 67, which was um, above, which is above the bound that we set of 65 and 65. So as soon as that was hit, then the car stopped. And that's it for this video. For the next video, I'll start showing the machine learning algorithm written to train the car how to drive within lane lines.